I have thought long and hard about the disaster that has overtaken my life and about the fate of my book. I wrote about ordinary human beings, about their pain, their joys, their mistakes and their deaths. And now I am forced to ask why the whole power of the state has been used to forbid publication, to steal my book from me and hide it like a convicted murderer. It contains no lies or slanders, only truth, pain and love for human beings. Dear Nikita Sergeyevich, I ask you, release my book from jail. I told only the truth. I ask you, set it free. Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman Dramatised for radio by Jonathan Myerson and Mike Walker Victor and Liuda Kazan, Autumn 1942 Life's a mess. Really, there's no getting around it. You make plans, they go wrong. You make other plans, they go wrong in a different way. After much consideration, I've come to the conclusion that life has a multiplicity of different ways in which things can go wrong. Incidentally, my father's a physicist and is very keen on things like multiplicity, which is how we ended up a million miles from Moscow in Kazan, because he was working on something important for the war. The war... Now, there you have a serious example of things going wrong. However, because of it, we socialists had a real chance to show the world what we were made of, which is steel. Ask Comrade Stalin. Nadia, are you ready? You'll be late. My mother is not a scientist. She believes in fate. But it seems to me that in the end, fate is just as messy and hard to live with as life. Hurry up, your breakfast is getting cold. Oh, mothers. Mama was worried about Tolia. That's my half-brother, who was with the army somewhere and she didn't know where. Tolia was nice. Much older than me. Nadia, will you come here this instant? Coming! Here I am. Morning, Mama. Mama, can I have honey with my tea instead of condensed milk? It'll be better for me. And I need something to make this dreary hole bearable, after all. Why? What's wrong with it? Everything. It's boring. Mm. Well, did you happen to know that Gorky once worked in a bakery in this very city that Lobachevsky lived here? No, somehow I didn't. You're impossible. Well, of course I am. Forced to live in this dreary city with no friends and no prospects. I'll end up being a vet in some dreadful village and no one will ever marry me. And I don't know. I think we've actually got a bit prettier these last few months. Oh, do shut up, Papa. What do you know about anything? I'm going to school. You haven't drunk your tea. With honey? I hate honey. I wish you wouldn't slam the door like that. <sighs> Good morning. Alexandra Vladimirovna. I hope you slept well. I slept as I always sleep, Victor. Thank you. Now, I must be off to... The hydrogenization of fats won't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I like to be out of the way so you can eat your breakfast in peace. Is there anything I can pick up for you? Nothing, Mama. Take care. I always take care. Don't worry so much, girl. You know, I think your mother would feel less of an intrusion if you let her do more for you. Not for us. Ah, oh, that's where she gets it from. Are you saying I don't make my mother welcome? Uh, no, you don't. I'm not. And goodness knows things are hard all over, but she feels she's imposing and you know, she wants to help. Mm. Oh. I, I may be a bit late this evening. I have something to discuss with Sokolov. Oh, you spend more time there than you do here. Be careful, Victor. I'll start thinking you're having an affair with Maria. Maria Ivanovna's your friend, not mine. Besides, how can I talk to a woman who thinks that Balzac wrote Madame Bovary? So there we were, the Strums and the Shaposhnikovs at home. Or going off to work, or school, or the laboratory. An ordinary day, just like any other day. And then along comes fate. (laughs) Ludmilla Nikolaevna, have you heard the news? We're moving back to Moscow. Uh, Not yet, obviously, but soon. They're going to pack us up and... Is something wrong? Where's Vitya? Victor? Well, I I suppose... Where is he? In his office. (laughs) He's in his office. What is it? Can't it wait? Luda? Tolya. A letter. This morning. Is it? What does it do? 
Seriously wounded. Can't write Lawson. <laughs> Dear God, what can we do? He's alive. My Tolia's alive. What can we... Well, we have to get out of here. Mm. Uh, come on. It was very sad. Like a story by Chekhov. Mama setting out alone on a dark autumn evening. The memory of tearful goodbyes with her husband, mother and daughter. There she was, standing on the deck of a river steamer as the black waves lapped and a cold wind caught the spray. Don't let Tolia die. Please don't let Tolia die. Please don't let Tolia die. Stay clear there! Stay on my port side, citizen! I must tell his father. He should know. Oh, Linda, what do you say? Arbachuk is in a camp. He's an arrested man. Tolia's his son. He should know he's wounded. He walked out on you. He even forbade you to use his name for the child. It doesn't matter, Mama. None of it matters. He's still Tolia's father. And he's in a camp. And you were lucky you didn't get dragged in, too. You were lucky you found a good man like Victor who took you in. No one took me in. Do you remember once you brought home our lost puppy and I said we couldn't take everything into the house and you said... You're a cruel man. And I said, I don't want you to be young and beautiful. I only want you to be one thing. I want you to be kind-hearted and not just towards cats and dogs. You never cared about Tolia? Never. Not really. It was always Nadia. Nadia. And now he's in hospital. And please, please, let him live. Let him live. You never cared about my mother. If you had, then maybe she would have stayed with us and not... I had to write that letter. You feel guilty? Because she was alone and... She died. But she wrote to you, Victor. You had her last words and they were written to you. <sighs> Let him live. Please. Let him live. Please sit down, Lyudmila Nikolaevna. Oh, what? I am very sorry to have to tell you that your son, Lieutenant Shaposhnikov, died a week ago. <gasps> he underwent a long and arduous operation under Dr. Meisel. It was a new procedure, and the doctor discussed the matter, the risks and the chance of success with Tolia, before the operation. Please believe me, Lyudmila Nikolaevna, there was nothing lacking in Tolia's care and treatment. All of us here were devastated by his death. If it is of any comfort, Dr. Meisel was able to refine a number of procedures during the operation, which will help save the lives of others. <laughs> I know Tolia was aware of this. I know he felt, even in this, that he was still a part of the great patriotic struggle of the motherland. Please put the tea by Lyudmila Nikolaevna. I know this is not the best time to ask, but in these days, there are no best times. Do you have any requests? I would like to see his grave. That will be arranged. His clothes? Any personal things, please? They will be returned to you. His last words, did he... say anything... He said, I think, it's a good thing they didn't see me like this. I think that's what he said. He was delirious, you understand. He might have said, it's a good thing she didn't see me like this. I can't be sure. That's all? Yes. Uh, 
I have uh, I have some uh, sardines and some sweets that I was bringing for the other patients. Oh, I will see they are passed on. Is there anything else? No. Thank you. If you will come back at half past nine tomorrow morning, I will arrange for you to see Tolia's grave. Yes. I did think afterwards, our loved one, our flower, where have you gone to now you have left us? It was something I remember my grandmother saying in our village when I was a girl. Thank you. Come on, then. They don't bury themselves. I take it easy. No rush today. Fritz must have run out of ammo. Ah. You want one? Nah. Ah. You thinking of doing any work today, then? Give over. Ground solid. Won't make no difference to the comrade Sarge. We get coffins, we bury him. So thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh. Oh. See? I told you. One truck. Oh, that's a good day then. Finished by lunch. It's Tuesday. I know it's Tuesday. And that's not a truck. It's a car. Listen, you can hear. It's due, you see? Tuesday. Yes. It's due. It's always due Tuesday. What the hell? It is a car. I told you. But it is the Sarge. Some woman. Bloody hell. Relatives. I mean, relatives. Who needs them? I don't suppose she wants to be here either, mate. She'd rather be at home cooking lunch for a fella. Dog the fag. Aye, she don't look good. She don't. I keep working. It's all right, mate. Aye! It's taking her over to last week's lot. Nothing for us today. No, oh, there's always something for us. It's all right. Mama's here now. I'm sorry I was so long. It's so good to find you. Are you comfortable? You know how you hate to lie on your left side. And reading under the covers with a torch. You'll be wearing glasses by the time you're 18. Don't be lonely, my sweet. Mama's here now. I'm here. And it's so good to be together. I'll look after you. I'll be here forever. Forever. Don't you worry, my sweet, sweet. Don't leave me, Tolia. <laughs> Never again leave your mama. Oh, please. My sweet, my sweet. What the hell? She's still here. You are? That bird. Must have been here all night. She doesn't get warmed up. She'll be here for good. Excuse me. Yes? Comrade. You better get some hot tea inside you. 
Put your coat on, will you? I'll stay. It's all right. It's my little boy. You see, I, I can't leave him alone. He'll be so cold. Here. Wipe your face. You've had a nosebleed. Oh. I'm sorry, really. But you just can't stay here. No. I mean, he wouldn't want you to. He'd, he'd want you to go on, your lad. Wouldn't he? Come on, little mother. Come on. When he was three on his birthday, we had a birthday tea with cakes and candles and pastries. And, and he said, Mama, why is it dark? It's my birthday. When Mama came home, she was different. I mean, she was still her, but it was like she wasn't really there. And she used to get up in the night and sit in the kitchen and talk to someone. And there was no one in the room. And it seemed work was going badly for Papa at the laboratory. He had that look he always got when something wouldn't work out. Whether it was trying to mend a tap or something else. Something bigger. Do you remember Piotr the line from Mandelstam? <laughs> The wolfhound century leaps at my throat, but I am no wolf by blood. Perhaps an unwise quote. But it's the war, didn't you see? Taking one here, a dozen there, fifty here, yeah, a thousand there. Men, women, children. It is surely a wolfhound century. Well, it is what it is, Victor. We have to deal with it and, as the old Roman said, do our jobs. Now that's more important than ever. Yes. What we're doing here. But if we are doing anything, I think sometimes. What have I done? What have any of us done? Galois laid down the modern science of mathematics dead at 21. Well, Einstein published when he was 25. Are we even capable of doing good work at our age? What do you say, Victor? Slow neutrons slipping around the U. 338 nucleus, but striking you 235. Yes, of course. But how to slow them? Well, we'll get there, will we? All I see is setbacks. A month ago, we think, yes, our results entirely confirmed the Minnesota experiments. Elegant, discreet, like great poetry, and then Anna Stepanovna, please do keep a permanent watch on number 23 when it's running. It's most important. Y Victor, try and relax. She's a good worker. She doesn't need to be snapped at. Forgive me, Anna. I apologise. Carry on. But you see, Peter, an elegant theory. And then we advance its boundaries, and it all falls to pieces. And we need what we needed, your equations, to shore up even a half-respectable structure. We're turning the Winter Palace into a shed. That's how we learn, Victor. I shouldn't have to tell you that. The work Markov is doing right now is pushing things further than we ever thought possible. It's inelegant. It's a botch. It's like a stupid troll capering around and doing something unmentionable in the corner of the room. <laughs> now, look at it this way. The Winter Palace starts off as a series of beautiful line drawings and Rastrelli's notebooks. And then it turns into a building site for years. And, and only at the end does it emerge once again as something... How did you put it? Elegant, discreet. It makes me think of Lud Miller sitting in the kitchen at night darning socks. It makes me feel depressed, Piotr. It does, it does. <sighs> Look, I tell you what. You need some distractions. Mm? Well, pop around to us this evening. Come with Karimov. He's an entertaining fellow and a writer rather than a scientist. And Majorov's coming. He's a good talker. Maybe I will, but uh, I don't like to leave Luda. Not when she's feeling so awful about her son. Listen, old fella. What is it? A couple of months since the boy died. Yes, it is a tragedy, but we have to go on.
What splendid weather it was today. Dry and frosty. Mm. Your mother would say it was like vodka, Victor. Yeah, and remember, whenever the sauerkraut was particularly good, she said it was like grapes. So she <laughs> did. <laughs> Oh, the landlady was around again today, right, Luda? Yes. Oh, that old bag is uh, defiantly not like vodka. <laughs> I suspect she drinks enough of the stuff. It smells like a distillery. Is she still going on about more rent for the woodshed? Yes. Well, tell her she can't have it. Are we going soon anyway? Didn't you say, Papa? Aren't we going back to Moscow? Well, sometimes things are not that simple. There is a war on, Nadia. Oh, well, I had noticed. I listened to the radio. You listen to those music shows, not the news. I do. The Stalingrad front is holding. Our heroic soldiers are kicking the fascists well, off. Well, that's enough. Thank you, Nadia. Aren't you interested in fascism, Papa? You ought to be. You're a Jew, which makes me half a Jew. So we'll be for it if they break through. They won't break through, Nadia. Stalin won't let them. It's easy for you to say. You're just a Russian. Me and Papa are different. That's enough. You've got an answer for everything, haven't you, young lady? But you know, as you get a bit older and learn a thing or two, you'll find out that the real answers aren't so easy at all. Tolly always preferred boiled potatoes to fried. Tomorrow he'll be 19 years and seven months old. I know, Luda. Well, more or less, not quite so. Mama, do you remember how awful it was for him when he had spots all over his face? They teased him at school, and when he came home, he asked if I could get him some cream for him. And when... And when he saw Vitya and tried to tell him, all he said was, Well, you've come out in stars, haven't you? Enough, 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 enough. There are five people in this kitchen, Luda, but only four of them are alive, and the one who isn't sits in the corner like Dostoyevsky's dreadful spider in the bathhouse. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. But I can't... I can't... I, I have to go out, excuse me. Oh. oh, the art of translation. I'm halfway through the Iliad, and it never ceases to surprise me. The invention, the sheer immediacy of the work. Well, that's what I'm trying to reproduce for a Russian audience. The great epic of war whilst we face a great war. It's highly appropriate. Well, I'm hopeful it'll be of some use. I wish I could say the same, but I just go around in circles that get increasingly ragged. It's, it's fascinating to me that Sokolov, who has provided the mathematics for our work, seems quite content to carry on from day to day with no more concern than if he were his father taking a boat up the Volga. Well, Sokolov's dad was a Volga boatman. <laughs> but he doesn't even drink. And he hates getting wet. <laughs> and he'll throw a wet slice of bread if someone else touches it. And he never, ever swears. Well, bugger me, brother. <laughs> oh, but he's a good sort. And Maria's a jewel. She's got a red nose. Yeah, but you can't say she's not a damn pretty woman. I can't honestly say I've ever noticed. Uh, she's a friend of Luda's and... Uh... Well, she always seems pleasant enough. Mm, you know, sometimes I think you Jews are even deeper than us Tartars. You know, there's a saying... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, <laughs> I carried him along with an unstoppable force, as we Tartars do. <laughs> <You're terrible. laughs> come in, come in. Victor, give me your coat. Oh, How's Luda? I meant to call round today. Oh, well, she, she sends her best wishes, yes. And, and Nadia and Alexandra Nikolaevna, too, all of them. Uh, Send their best wishes. <laughs> Splendid. Now, come through and get warm. You know. Oh, come on. No, 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 Piotr. Wait. You find news. <laughs> yes. Oh, Victor. There you are. Uh, uh, Victor Strum, uh, my colleague, and Ahmed Karimov, translator of Homer and Virgil, my brother in law. Uh, Leonard Majanov. Yes, I know your work, Brother Karimov. Uh, pleasure to meet you. And Brother Strum. Piotr has often mentioned you, but uh, a Soviet greeting to a Soviet scientist. In, in, indeed, a pleasure. Yes. Right now, Brother, as a scientist, <clears throat> you'll appreciate the need for truth, eh? for news you can trust. I was just saying, imagine seeing in the news what's really happening in the Politburo. 
what the grain yields really are, or, or you go into a bookshop and pick up any book you want. And you'll appreciate this one, Brother Karimov. Translated from the English, the French, the German. So we can work it all out for ourselves without... Yeah, enough, our... enough. It's too far. Oh, a free press, Piotr. Enough. Uh, I think it's time for some tea. Uh, well, there you are, Maria. Uh, your husband has abolished freedom of the press and uh, saved you from hearing this uh, seditious chatter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, Madyarov. He doesn't mean it. And he does go on and on uh, and <laughs> on. <laughs> well, hasn't our system demonstrated its strengths? Haven't the bourgeois democracies already collapsed? But in 1940, the bourgeois Finns kicked out... Oh, it wasn't the Finns. It was the winter. Oh, come on, Piazza. The maths are quite clear. Two and two equal... In this war, the Soviet state has demonstrated both its strengths and weaknesses. What weaknesses? Well, for a start, all those people who've been arrested when they could have been fighting the Germans. I mean, well, why have we been driven back to Stalingrad? Why are we clinging to the banks of the Volga? We're not clinging. We did not retreat. We led them on, made them overextend their supply lines disastrously. Basically, if you... We are of use to the state, it'll use us. If we are not, it will discard us. There are two distinct principles. Stalin doesn't build what people need, he builds what the state needs. And as for the White Sea Canal, I mean, there's no use to anyone. We can't see the bigger picture from where we stand because we don't, my friends, stand on Olympus. We stand on the plains of Troy, fighting for our lives. And our tea. Mm. <laughs> Don't <laughs> let it get cold. How could we, Maria? In the West, they drink wine and talk all night, and here we drink tea and talk forever. <laughs> oh, with the... Mm, raspberry jam, you are a wonder. <laughs> <laughs> the way to a Russian's heart, raspberry jam. <laughs> and what about the way to a Russian's brain? Look, I, I told you, enough of that stuff, Leonard. <laughs> the way to a Russian's brain is through his heart. Uh, now, that is the cleverest thing anyone said tonight. <laughs> and the way to a Tartar's heart? Through his horse. But I don't have a horse. More tea. Uh, of course, <laughs> of course. We're talking of bookshops, Leonid. Uh, when was the last time you saw any Dostoevsky on sale? Uh, true, he's very much out of fashion. Because he's a reactionary, he's anti-Semitic. Anti-Tartar, for sure. Uh, you can't shave bits off a genius. He doesn't fit into our ideology. The state can't use him, you mean. Oh, we're not back there, are we? Go on like that, Leonid, and there won't be anyone left to read from the last century. Well, I don't know. The Tolstoy has come right back into fashion with war and peace. Mm -hmm. Because the idea of the people's war is of use. He even gets quoted in speeches. Well, let's do it. I tell you who comes out of all of this best. Mm -hmm. Anton Chekhov. <laughs> Everyone loves Chekhov. Yes, because he's a realist. Uh, no, because he's something entirely different. Who do you mean? Uh, you don't say anything against Chekhov, Leonid. He... He's my favourite writer. No, he took Russian democracy onto his shoulders and he took it along the path of freedom. A path which I don't have to remind you, Lenin chose not to take. You're not Lenin. Don't do it, Lenin. Uh, Leave Vladimir Ilyich alone. You, you interest me. Go on. Look, yeah, I, I, I think we'd better... Uh, it's getting a bit late. No, no, look at Chekhov's heroes. Did anyone, even Balzac, have as many different characters? He brought Russia into our consciousness in all its vastness through people of every class, estate yeah. and age. He said, and no-one had said this before, not even Tolstoy, that first and foremost, we are all of us human beings. Yeah. And only then are we scientists, soldiers, mm. bishops, Tartars, Jews, workers. Instead of saying people are better or worse because of who they are, he said we are all of equal value because we are human beings. Exactly. And yet the only reason Karimov here got a, a Tartar state was because of the party and the revolution. You, you, you've got your own opera, your own language. Newspapers? Oh, yes. Yeah. Maybe we have an opera and newspapers, but Moscow collects our harvests and sends us to prison. Well, would it be better to be sent to prison by Tartar? What if people weren't sent to prison at all? Mario, what will you want now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's, um, it's getting late. I, I, I don't want to be a bad host, but I... Of course. Really... Uh, you know, the way to a Russian's brain is the same as, as the way to his heart. Let him talk. <laughs> and uh, now... Good night. Uh, will you walk along with me, Karimov? Mm. Leonid Sergeyevich? Uh, my way lies differently, Brother Strong. Uh, like Russians of old, we sit and then we Good separate. <laughs> Maria, <laughs> thank you uh, for all the tea. Yeah, yeah. Off you go, <laughs> all of you. We've work to do in the morning. Ah, oh, 
Look at the stars, Victor. Such stars. Russian stars? Mm, perhaps Homer's stars. Did mighty Hector and swift Achilles and cunning Odysseus look at these stars during their battles? Or Pierre Bezukhov on his sleigh ride. <laughs> no comets of ill omen tonight. Only Maria Sokolova. Huh? Well, don't say you weren't looking at her. I, I was polite, I hope. Besides, her teeth are uneven. Did you notice that? No. And she has uh, thin lips no. and narrow shoulders. No. But she does have the most enchanting smile. And, uh, she likes you. Oh, and we like those who like us. She's really Luda's friend. Yes. The uh, brother-in-law. Majora. Mm. Clever fella, eh, brother Tartar? And yet, did you notice the most innocent remarks sounded like provocations? And do you know he was arrested in 1937, held for a few months, and then released? No, I didn't, I. You think he's an informer? No one was released in 1937. I don't know. And what is that about Chekhov? You see, by Chekhov, the, the, somehow that's been going around in my mind. Uh, Victor? What? You're all right? You need a doctor? We should get you to a hospital. Don't you see? No, no. no how could you? I, I, I looked up and it was like I could suddenly, through, yes, through all the... All those stars, those great star fields turned, turned, and it was awful, and it was so beautiful, and I knew. Do you see, Karim, of it all fell into place? Neutrons, the atom, the isotope, the... <laughs> Have you gone completely insane? <sighs> On the contrary, I've just gone completely and utterly sane and found the answer. And it is the most astonishingly graceful and beautiful thing that I have ever been part of. It gave birth to itself like a supernova blooming in the utter cold and darkness of deepest space. <sighs> so Papa had his big idea and he was working on it all the time, even the time when he was doing other things. And Mama had her big grief and she was working on that all the time, even the time she was doing other things. Mostly, they just seemed to live in the same house as me and Grandmama. But sometimes I think... Papa at least tried to make it like it was, even if it wasn't. Ah, I'm not late, am I? No later than usual. Good morning to you, Alexandra Vladimirovna. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Papa. Did you have a nice rest? Nadia, why are you being so charming? It is my nature, Papa. Oh, I am really? a charming young woman. <laughs> Comrade Grigoryevna at school said I could be charming if ever I tried. Oh, so now you're trying? Papa! You'll be very trying. Uh, is the tea hot? <laughs> Here you are. Some bread. And some jam. Uh, just a little. Papa yeah. doesn't need any food now he's got the big idea. Well, I don't know what your mother would say about that. I mean, it's a strange feeling, uh, knowing that uh, whatever ha happens now, I realise deep down in my heart that I haven't lived in vain. It's as if I'm not even afraid of dying. You did, you see? Uh, now, now that the work exists, the, the pages, it's there. It's, it's just, it's something entirely new. And yes, it's a new, a new principle. Oh, that's wonderful, Victor. I'm very glad. It is wonderful, Victor. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm off. Yeah, don't slam the door. Are you really not afraid of dying, Papa? Uh, well, n uh, well, no, but I suppose I'm now a proletarian who has more to lose than his chains. Uh, that's a joke. Oh. I must be away too. Busy day. Ah, those fatty, um, oh, acids. 
Any news on your return to Moscow, Victor? Uh, yes, we're, we're definitely going, uh, but um, they'll, they'll probably give us just a, a few hours' notice. Are you sure that you... I've made up my mind. I like it here. I'll stay if I can. Luda doesn't need me always in the way. Well, you know that's not true, Mama. As long as you want to be with us. Besides, as Victor says, the future of the hydrogenization of fats <laughs> depends on the efforts of every worker. <laughs> <laughs> well, so are you proud of your... Uh... What did you say? Uh, nothing. It's, uh, it's all right. I'll see you later. I'll um, I'll be in my study working. I'm well, uh, nearly there. Yes. Yeah, uh... And we'll go to the bakers and see if they have any bread and the buns that you like, the sugar buns. There's a story about sugar buns, and as we go, I'll tell you all about it. Come in. Thank you. Oh, you've been a bit of a stranger at the lab. Nothing wrong, I hope. Oh, quite the contrary. Oh. So the, the rumours are true, then? Oh, come through, come through. Maria, not around. <laughs> we didn't have to spend our whole time at home, you know. <laughs> so. So. Uh, well, what's in the... Uh, in the briefcase, then? Mm. Oh, it's true. It, it's really true. Uh, have a look. You're the first to see. Not nervous, then? Oh, oddly, no. I am... Well, read it. All right. Here, uh, um, I'll, I'll put the radio on so uh, you can listen while I read. Oh, it's wonderful, old man. Quite unbelievable. Logic, elegance. It even looks beautiful. See? When you were downhearted, you were wrong. You give up too easily. This promises great results. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes. Thank you, Piotr. It's going to point us in an entirely new direction as far as neutrons and heavy metals. <laughs> we'll need new apparatus. These energies are going to be massive. Well, but that's just a side issue, Piotr. This is about a whole new way of seeing the microforces within the atom. I mean, I want to bring joy to a few hearts, shine the odd light in the darkness. Oh, yeah. They'll be as glad as runners when someone else sets a new record. What, so, has my new record upset you, Piotr? <sighs> I think the thing of it is that this solution is so elegant, so blindingly obvious once you've done the impossible and made it so that... Everyone is going to be saying to themselves, yes, of course, that's just what I was thinking all along. But they weren't. None of us were, only you. But it will make a difference to us, to the lab, to our work, maybe even to the war. Oh, I'm not denying any of that, Victor. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, well, no, there's something I, I want to show you, uh, to read you. If I can find it. Uh, oh, do you lose everything? I never lose anything. Sometimes I wish I could. Life would be easier. It's here somewhere. I know it is. So are you having a yeah. gathering this Saturday as usual? Perhaps we could celebrate. Well, you know, between ourselves, I, I don't really enjoy those kind of evenings anymore. Really? Why? Oh, you know why. Some people simply said too much. Well, you didn't, so you <clears throat> nothing to worry about. No, besides, I, I no longer... Well, Majarov and I, we, 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 we don't see eye to eye anymore. Oh, come on. Well, why shouldn't a man criticise the state if he feels like it? We're not children. This is right. Not at this time. Not now. Well, look, I, I should be off anyway. Th thank you for reading no, 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 the no, thing. No, no, no. Wait, wait. I've got it. Here. Listen. It's, uh... It's Goethe on Copernicus. Mm. It really is quite outstanding. Uh, <clears throat> yes. The world had hardly become known as round 
when it was asked to give up the tremendous privilege of being the centre of the universe. <laughs> no wonder his contemporaries did not wish to let it all go and offered every possible resistance and objection to a new idea which demanded a clarity and honesty of vision which had, so far, not even been dreamed of. But, no, really, I, I am honoured you showed it to me first. It's, it's quite outstanding, Vichy, really, quite... Quite... Uh, oh, thank you. Outstanding. Maria Ivanovna, how, uh, how how nice. You were visiting Piotr? I, I, I was, and uh, I, I think I behaved like a bit of a, uh, a pompous ass, actually. What? What? What is it? No, wait, there's something different about you today. Oh, how's Ludmilla? Different, how do you mean? Is she any better? I should come round. Oh, you're her guardian angel. Suffering, I think. Luda... In your eyes, usually there. But not today? No. <laughs> Something else. Your, your work? Yeah, you see things, Maria. I see what's there to see. But that's so rare. Just now when I was talking to Piotr, I was saying the opposite of what I wanted to say. I was supporting Madyarov when all the time I wanted to condemn him. Uh, the work, yes. For the first time, perhaps for the only time in my whole life, I have seen what is there. Does that change things? I, I don't know. Uh, well, you make me feel calm, <laughs> at least. So, bless you for that, Maria Ivanovna. Uh, sorry, I, I'm holding you up. Yes, uh, yes, I, uh, I must. Are you happy because of what you found? Happy? I, 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 I don't know. I feel that I've done the most important thing in my life. I've seen something that I do know to be true and real, and no one else has seen it yet. It's like uh, new snow, virgin snow, uh, untouched and stretching to the farthest north. <laughs> you are happy, Victor. Well, I... I can see it there in your face. It's the same face I've come to... And yet there's something wonderful, like, like a saint in an icon gazing at... Uh, uh, be safe, Viktor Pavlovich. Just at Sokolov's, he tells me the two of you have fallen out. I'm sorry to hear it. Yes, it's a pity. I suppose things were said? Opinions, yes. But in the heat of the moment. Well, you don't feel you were taking risks? An unnecessary risk? Of course not. Was I? I think it's possible, brother, that your friend Karimov is an informer. But. but he's a Tartar. Tartars can't be informers. Don't you see? All his colleagues, his whole local circle, where are they? They're not walking the streets. And there he is, flourishing with half a dozen state commissions. I have to say, he said the same about you, Leonard. <laughs> well, he would, wouldn't he? Anyway, just a word, Brother Strum, that's all. Just a word to the wise. Must be off. Yeah. Where do you want the retort stack, comrade professor? Uh, are they all in straw? I don't want any breakages. This material is vital. All done to your instructions, comrade. It's just that the loading manifests aren't clear as to which truck... Uh, yeah, number four, not seven. Four is sprung. Glass in, sprung trucks always. <laughs> Thank you. you say? Uh, Victor Pavlovich, have you a moment? Uh, of course. Uh, only I was checking the lists mm. for personnel moving to Moscow, and 
I'm not down. My name isn't down. I know, Anna Stepanovna, and it's a great nuisance. You're a brilliant lab assistant, but there are two lists, and they put you on the second, so we'll just have to do without you for a couple of weeks, that's all. But I'm the only one from our section not on the first list. And, and how will you even set up the lab without me? Yeah, I agree, but you know what they're like... Just office managers, these things happen. I mean, I've had a few others speaking to me. It's infuriating, actually. They send people we don't need and keep people we do. Well, it doesn't just happen, Viktor Pavlovich, that all the people who aren't going on the first list happen to be Jews. Oh, oh come on, Anna. We're not still living under the czars. I'm going, and who am I? I'm Viktor Strum. It's time you forgot all that old nonsense. But easy oh. with that. It's highly valuable. Tea hot. It's chilly out there. I thought we'd never be done. Alexandra Vladimirovna, how are the hides? Is everything all right? Mother got back late today, Victor. I met someone who saw Mitya before the war. No one ever talked about Mitya. Mitya was my uncle Dmitri, Mama's brother, Aunt Jenya's brother. We'll get to her in time. I told you things don't happen here like they do in proper stories. Mitya was grandmother's son, and when she came back that day, she looked like she just aged a hundred years. Don't ask me why people never talked about Mitya. I don't know. Yes, I do. No, I don't. He was arrested one day. In 1937. Are you sure he really knew Mitya? Oh, yes, he said. He just lay on the bunk, whistling, Little Bird, where have you been? He said Mitya was ill, scurvy and heart trouble. He said Mitya thought he'd never get out. He said Mitya had a job in the kitchen. That's the best place to be. Yeah, not for nothing did he have two degrees. Maybe this man was a provocateur. Why would someone like that bother with an old woman like me? Maybe they're interested in Victor. That's nonsense. Anyway, why was this man released, did he say? He said he'd been written off. He said that when prisoners are on their last legs, they let them go so they don't have to bury them. Oh. They let them go, you see. He said there was a new man in Moscow running things now and that thousands had died and thousands had been executed. Oh, my God. But does Stalin know about these things? Oh, my God, of course he did. He gave the orders, didn't he? Nadia, cut it out. <laughs> Look, don't you forget that Stalin is the commander-in-chief of the army fighting against fascism. My mother trusted Stalin until her last day, and if we still live and breathe, it's because of the Red Army and Stalin. So first, learn to wipe your nose properly, then criticise Stalin. First, learn to wipe your nose properly. Did you hear that back in the village, Papa? Did the village elder pass oh. on the old village wisdom to the village lads as they went out to look after the... What was it you looked after as a village lad? Quadratic equations? Be quiet, Nadia. Don't speak to your father like that. Why, that's what he used to say when he came back from the Sokolovs. He criticised Stalin too. Well, you're imagining it. Do we have to talk about these things anyway? I have always been totally consistent. How dare you accuse me of being dishonest? Well, Luda, did you hear what your daughter said? What did I say? I don't know why you're complaining. She gets it from you. Maria says the conversations you have at their place with that dreadful Madhyarov and the Tata are awful. Complain, that's what you do. And now you don't. When can we get away from here and go back to Moscow? Besides, you are lying and you're supposed to be a scientist. <sighs> Is this all we've come to? Being angry with each other? Nadia, look at your face. Luda. Mm. Vitya, is this all? Oh, Grandmama. <laughs> there, there, there. <laughs> there. Silly girl. It's all right. <laughs> yes, it's it's all right. We don't know how much we've got when we've still got each other. <sighs> and we'll be going soon, I promise. Moscow awaits. We were going home. We said goodbye to Grandmama. She took over our flat. That was sad. But mostly we were glad to be leaving. Nobody seemed to know what was happening in the war except that we'd stopped the Germans at the Volga and we were giving them a bloody nose at Stalingrad. They were strange days. But we were going home to Moscow. 
everyone was going home to Moscow. Uh, uh, citizen! Can, can you give us a lift? Citizen! Over here! Over here! Come on, come on, hurry, Nadia. Don't worry, Papa, I've got the cases. I've got the cases, young lady. Except that it didn't look back. very homely. At least not from the back of the truck we got a lift on. It was grimy, everything was smoky, and there were piles of dirty snow everywhere. And the people didn't look like Muscovites at all, they looked like peasants. So, mademoiselle, this isn't the Moscow you dreamed of when we were in Kazan. We want to save our cities from wolves and snow and weeds. We must remember they're part of nature. We must keep our brooms and spades and rifles handy. If we go to sleep or go away or think about something else, then the wolves come out of the forest, the thistles spread and everything's buried under dust and snow. Are you warm enough, Luda? What are you talking about, Papa? It isn't the death of civilization. It's just that no one has got around to clearing up the snow yet. Nonsense. Look at all that ice. And... Oh! 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 <laughs> you two should stop arguing all the time. Oh, what? Argue with old Father Abraham? Nadia. What are you talking about? Abraham? When we stopped at Moron, that's all. What? Nadia and I went for a walk along the platform, remember? Mama was asleep. I was not. Anyway, there were some children there, young men, and one of them shouted, there goes old Father Abraham back to Moscow to get his medal for defending the city. That's all. It wasn't anything. Except that Papa's a patriarch and a prophet. I mean, he is really now. He's got his big idea. Maybe there'll be a statue. Abraham was a Jew as well. Yes, but that's all. That's not the way we think now. We are Russians, all of us. Every single one. Is this it? Thanks, citizen. Is there any chance you could give us a hand up with some of the luggage? Uh, we're on the top floor. We have bread, a uh, couple of nice loaves. Oh, lead on, citizen. <laughs> now, dear, you stay with the truck and keep an eye on things. Here, anyone tries anything, love, blow on this. They laugh in your shoelaces round here. Give them half a chance. Right, uh, stop passing the stuff down. Mama! Pass! Blimey! All this belongs to you? I mean, it's yours. The three of you. The four of us. Huh. The three of us. We've got eight square metres for six. The old lady, she sleeps in the day when we're all out and spends the night in a chair. We've got water, at least. We can use the lavatory. Uh, uh, and electricity, but uh, no heating. Um, uh, works. No gas. Ah. Uh, uh, Vasily Ivanovich, uh, Victor Strom. Yes, we're back, so if you could turn on the heating uh, before we all freeze, uh, and the gas. Uh, right, do you have the... Um, the thank you. Uh, pencil, you do. Um, I'll get uh, down there and uh, fetch some more, then. Uh, God. Haven't you folks got a lot of stuff? Uh, I have to call the authorities to get the gas put on, but he'll open up the heating pipes. It's going to need a good cleaning. All of it. But... We're here. <laughs> We're home. Yes, it's coming through. We'll be warm enough. Whoa. There, that's your lot. Is there something to eat? I'm starving. Just wait, will you? Uh, thanks, citizen. Here you are. It's good bread, too. Oh, thank you, citizen. Uh, oh, and uh, good luck. What does he mean, good luck? Oh, he was just being pleasant, Victor, that's all. After all, you're the conquering hero. Oh, when's the heat coming on? It is on. It's not very hot. And I'm hungry. When can we eat? Once the gas has been turned on. Meanwhile, you can keep warm by carrying this lot downstairs to the bins. Must I? It's all dusty. Yeah, that's why they're dust bins. <laughs> Off you go. You are not funny, Papa. <laughs> Here, our daughter was born. Here she returns. Here she is bad-tempered. It's her age. I ah. was bad-tempered when I was her age. Everything always seems so complicated, unfair, I don't know. Well, who does? Uh, when we were coming back, it wasn't just being called Old Father Abraham. There was another train. Prisoners. German prisoners? Russian. Huh? 
They were pressing against the barred windows and shouting, give us a smoke, give us a smoke. I keep seeing their faces when I should be seeing smiling faces at the Academy of Science applauding the conquering hero. Hello, Strom Flat? What? No, N not at the moment. Who? Hello? What? For Nadia. A young man. He asked if she was here and then hung up. Nadia. A boy. Impossible. I suppose we all thought in one way or another that everything was going to be all right. That isn't how life works out when fate takes a hand. Everything was going to get a lot worse. In Victor and Liuda, Victor was played by Kenneth Branagh and Liuda by Greta Skaki. Maria was Harriet Walter, Sokolov was Nigel Anthony, Nadia, Ellie Kendrick, and Alexandra, Anne Mitchell. Karimov was Stephen Greif, Madyarov, Ralph Ineson, Anna Stepanovna, Alex Tregear, and the sister, Elaine Claxton. Other parts were played by Gerard McDermott, Jonathan Forbes, and Henry DeVass. Original music was composed by John Hardy with Rob Whitehead and performed by Oliver Wilson Dixon, Tom Jackson, Stacey Blythe and Max Powell. Life and Fate, Victor and Liuda was dramatised by Mike Walker from the novel by Vasily Grossman. The director was Alison Hindle.